Welcome to the next video in the Patterns in Nature topic. This video is going to be addressing the dot point compare open and closed circulatory systems using one vertebrate and one invertebrate as examples. So it's another compare dot point. So we need to look at the similarities and differences between open and closed circulatory systems. And in particular, we need to look at one vertebrate and one invertebrate as examples of these systems. So we'll actually be looking at a few examples, but you need to be able to familiarize yourself with one of each vertebrate and one invertebrate. So, excuse me, closed circulatory systems are exactly that. They are found in vertebrate animals. So fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals such as humans. So organisms that have a backbone have closed circulatory systems. So in a closed circulatory system, blood is always flowing inside a blood vessel that is pumped around by the heart. So in humans, we have our heart that pumps the blood from the heart into our arteries. Our arteries then become smaller capillaries, and then the capillaries become veins and carry the blood back to the heart again. A closed circulatory system is a highly efficient system as blood can keep flowing and provide a steady flow of nutrients, gases, and wastes to and from the cells. This obviously allows the vertebrates to grow large, which ties into our dot point that we looked at two videos ago, where we looked at the idea that organisms need transport systems in order to carry nutrients to the cells and wastes from the cells. So if organisms didn't have a closed circulatory system to carry those nutrients efficiently around the body, they couldn't actually grow to be the size that they are. So something we do need to note, however, is that the circulatory systems of fish, amphibians, and most reptiles are slightly different to mammals, but still closed. So this comes down to the size of the heart, the number of chambers within the heart. Obviously, because they are quite smaller and not as complex organisms, they can, um, they've adapted to being able to have a different number of chambers of the heart or slightly different circulatory systems. But the thing that you need to remember is that all of the blood is continuously flowing within those three types of blood vessels. So this here shows a picture of a closed circulatory system. So we see the heart here, the heart pumps the blood into larger vessels. In mammalian cases, it is the arteries that have branches into the smaller vessels of the capillaries, which are only one cell thick and allow the diffusion of substances into and out of the cells and then into larger ve uh, veins that bring the blood back to the heart. So as I said in the previous slide, we can see that the hearts and the circulatory systems are a little bit different between fish, amphibians, reptiles and humans or mammals in particular. So all mammals have a four-chambered heart. So they have two atrium and two ventricles. So that helps to keep the oxygenated and the deoxygenated blood completely separate. So this is an extremely efficient circulatory system. So the oxygenated blood gets pumped from the lungs to the heart and then from the heart to all the organs of the body. Okay, and then the deoxygenated blood carrying the waste gets carried back to the heart and into the lungs in order to get rid of that carbon dioxide and to pick up the oxygen and continue the cycle. Reptiles also have a four-chambered heart, but it's not as, not as strong and not as uh, efficient as ours. They also have this extra circuit here, the right systemic aorta, which allows the movement of mixed blood, so that's mixed oxygenated and deoxygenated blood to take blood to the capillaries as well. So it's not entirely efficient because this blood here would also be ca carrying carbon dioxide, which is not necessary for the cells. Then as we move to the amphibian's heart, we can see that there's no division between the two sides, the left and the right side of the heart. So we only have two atrium, and this time amphibians have one ventricle. So there's a lot of mixing of the blood. So a lot of this deoxygenated blood recirculates throughout the body. Basically, it's not delivering anything of much worth to the cells. And then our fish have the simplest of the circulatory systems. It only has two chambers, an atrium and a ventricle. There's no um, separation of the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood in the heart. That occurs in the lungs. So the deoxygenated blood comes into the heart and deoxygenated blood leaves the heart and travels to the lungs. 
So obviously, as the organisms become more complex, uh, our circulatory system becomes a lot more efficient in the delivery of oxygenated blood to the cells for the uh, process of respiration. So, oh, <clears throat> sorry, open circulatory systems, on the other hand, are found in invertebrates, so simple organisms such as mollusks and arthropods, so insects, snails, crabs, etc. So it is a simpler system in which the blood or the fluid doing the same job, which is na named hemolymph, does not always stay inside a vessel. So hemolymph is the liquid that flows around the circulatory system. It's different to blood because it doesn't have the same components as blood that's found in vertebrates. It is not very efficient is the blood is not forced to keep it flowing. So there's no real um, pumping mechanism in open circulatory systems. and because the uh, hemolymph doesn't stay within vessels. It sort of just flows in any direction. In small insects with their separate gas exchange system that is not dependent on blood flow, this simple circulation is adequate. So obviously these organisms are very small, so they don't have a very large um, distance that the blood or the hemolymph needs to travel. So it it's fine for them at their size. So here we can see a cricket. Uh, at the top we've got our very simplified image of an open circulatory system. So the heart simply just pumps blood into these openings. Okay, so the heart pumps the hemolymph into a series of vessels. However, then those vessels open straight into the body cavity of the insect. Okay, and then it eventually makes its way back to the heart and the cycle continues. So as you can see, again, unlike our open and closed, sorry, unlike our closed circulatory system, there's no uh, separation of the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. So the cells aren't really effectively being uh, provided with the oxygen that they need to carry out respiration. But again, because they're quite small, uh, it doesn't really make a huge difference. They've adapted to be able to deal with this. So when we're doing a comparison, a really good way to show a comparison is to create a table. Another way is to do a Venn diagram. So here we have a table that looks at a number of features that have open and closed circulatory systems and the differences between them. So in open circulatory systems, the blood flow is slow, okay, whereas in closed circulatory systems, it's a lot faster because of the pumping mechanism of the heart. The movement of the fluid is provided by the contraction of muscles in the open circulatory systems. However, in closed circulatory systems, as we said, that pumping mechanism of the heart pushes the blood around. So the type of fluid in the open circulatory systems is known as hemolymph, which is a fluid plasma that contains free-floating cells. So this is very different to the blood, which is a combination of plasma, red blood cells and white blood cells, with a number of dissolved substances that are able to travel with it through the circulatory system. So our open circulatory systems are found in invertebrates such as mollusks and arthropods, so examples being insects, worms and snails, whereas vertebrates have closed circulatory systems including any fish, amphibians, mammals and birds. Open circulatory systems, as we've said, are not very efficient because of that slow movement of the fluid uh, the fact that it just opens up into openings and doesn't isn't contained within vessels. So those factors make our closed circulatory systems highly efficient. They're able to transport the substances that the organisms need very quickly. So how does exchange of materials take place in open circulatory systems? The cells and organs are bathed in hemolymph, so diffusion occurs directly across the surface of the cell. Whereas in our closed circulatory systems, because the blood is still contained within the, in the capillaries when it comes in contact with the cells, diffusion occurs across the surface of the capillaries, which are only one cell thick, so they're extremely thin. Uh, so this allows gases to be exchanged, nutrients to be delivered, and wastes to be removed. So as we can see from that table, we've created a really nice comparison of the two circulatory systems and we've named our one vertebrate and one invertebrate example. And that brings us to the end of this video. So thank you for watching.